work on NLNG Train 7 plant project in Bonny Island, flagged off in River State. I think this is, it just shows what, what is possible and I'm glad to see that this is a Nigerian made electric car. First made in Nigeria electric car unveiled in Abuja. FRSC National Traffic Radio Station inaugurated On Good Morning Nigeria today, our focus is on managing Nigeria's inflation. Oh well, over time, Kieran, experts have suggested periodic reconstitution of a country's inflation basket to capture the rapidly changing consumption patterns of Nigerians. In fact, uh, the last revision of Nigeria's inflation basket was in 2009, leaving concerned persons with questions about the impact uh, this gap could have on policy decision making. And indeed, available research has indicated that for many years, food prices have driven inflation in Nigeria, and this has increased steadily since the country's land borders were closed in August 2019 and the situation was further aggravated by currency pressure, insecurity and a host of other factors. Nigeria's annual inflation rose from 18.2% in April 2021, year on year, as well as month on month from 0.97% in April 2021. The National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, attributed this rise in food index to increase in prices of oil and fats, fish, fruits, soft drinks, milk, cheese, eggs, meat, vegetables, bread, cereals, as well as tea and uh, cocoa. Uh, yes, Kuriam, but the NBS, however, indicates that uh, headline inflation dropped from 1.01% in May to 17 percent, rather 17.93 percent. Recall that uh, the country went into its recession in the third quarter of 2020 and exited this phase in the fourth quarter, with the analysts still concerned that other factors are still fueling inflation. And um, in the new Finance Act 2020, duties on tractors were reduced from 35% to 10%. There was also a reduction in duties on motor vehicles for transportation of goods to, you know, 10%, as well as a reduction in levy on motor vehicles for transportation of persons from rather 25% to 5%. These measures are expected to reduce domestic costs, though concerns are being raised over the challenge in uh, accessing foreign exchange as well as the hurdles encountered by exporters and manufacturers as the country's uh, ports. Now, how can Africa's largest economy manage factors triggering inflation? What immediate steps are necessary to plug all gaps full in the current inflation? These issues uh, inform our focus on managing inflation in Nigeria. And thank you for joining us. I am Yusuf Nadabu Suman, and good morning, Nigeria. And I am Kirin Maya, and join my colleague Yusuf uh, in welcoming you to Good Morning Nigeria, reaching you live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority and from the nation's capital here in Abuja. And we shall serve you as usual complimentary segments of newspaper review, business, and sports in the course of the program. For now, here is our colleague, Musbao Dan Rahab, with the morning news. Good morning, Musbao. So, very good morning, Kirian and Yusuf. Uh, let's take the news. 
President Mohamed Buhari has spoken of the need for countries in the West African sub-region and the Sahel bedeviled by challenges of security to team up and confront the menace. The President stated these while receiving the new special representative of the UN Secretary General for West Africa and the Sahel, Mohamed Saleh Hanadif. The federal government has promised to sustain efforts at boosting the development of Nigeria's abundant gas resources, strengthening the gas value chain, developing the much-needed infrastructure, and enhancing safety operations in the sector, as outlined in the National Gas Policy of 2017. President Mohamed Buhari, who made the promise, said the government is also determined to leverage on a decade of gas uh, initiative to transform the country into a major gas and industrialized nation. This was during the virtual groundbreaking ceremony of NLNG Train 7 project in Bonny River State. Of more gas projects by the international oil companies and the indigenous operators and more trains from Nigeria LNG to harness the over 600 trillion cubic feet of Roman gas reserves we are endowed with. Now, the saying that to road safety is everybody's business, this uh, Tuesday was further emphasized as the Federal Road Safety Corps added a national traffic radio station to its effort at ensuring that safety returns to the nation's highways. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshinbaju, while performing the inauguration, says Nigerians will now be well informed on road traffic situation before or while traveling. It can even be used to reach far-flung areas for teaching and dissemination of public health advisories and information. So I really think that the vision uh, of the, and the resourcefulness of the leadership of the FRC ought to be commended. Elsewhere, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaju Tuesday declared open a five-day exhibition of Made in Nigeria Goods and Services, describing the product as pride of the nation. The Vice President of the event has drove the first Made in Nigeria electric car. Fantastic drive and really smooth, really smooth. I think this is, it just shows what, what is possible and I'm um, glad to see that this is a Nigerian made electric car and you can literally charge it anywhere. So I think it's a, it's a very, very fantastic innovation and fantastic product and, so, and I can tell you because I drove it. Fantastic indeed, Mr. Vice President. Now, moving on, the World Bank says it will continue to partner Nigeria to see through reforms that would uh, propel growth and development in the country. The financial institution also advised on deeper fiscal and monetary policy engagements targeted at uplifting the poor and reducing costs to free resources for development. Absorb the impact of that. And the immediate, most promising a uh, way of doing so would be to think about direct cash transfers for, not for everyone, but for the poorest Nigerians, the working class, low income Nigerians who are feeling the pinch. Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says it will partner with its Gambian counterpart to strengthen macroeconomic policies and framework needed for development of the two countries. This was uh, the fallout of a visit by delegation of Gambian Central Bank to CBN. I think we can share ideas, we can share about how we can help ourselves. And whether we like it or not, we must put our foot forward first to help our country before expecting others to come help us. And that is a mantra that our president has adopted and that is what we are following through on. The recent investigative sitting by the House other committee on status of the Nigerian recovered funds centered on whether or not the Office of a National Security Advisor should source money from the recovered funds and the recovery operation by the Nigeria Police Force. Okay, so why did you so refund? Why, why, why would you return the returned? money? Because that company, that, as at that time, was under investigation. So he said the fact that they are under investigation, that we should return, return the money back to the Treasury. And that was what happened. There will be transparency that will ensure that things that are wasted 
needs to, to, to be put together and turn into asset. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 17 new cases of COVID-19 in just three states in the country. The states are Lagos with 13 new cases, Rivers 3, and Gumbi with just a new case. With this development, Nigeria now has 167,095 confirmed cases of COVID-19, out of which 163,000 483 patients were treated and discharged, while 2,117 deaths have been recorded so far. That's the morning news for now. Good morning, Nigeria. We'll continue in just a moment with Kirian and Yusuf after this break. Let's begin on the street of Lagos to find people that can sing. Let's give this show voice of the street. He like he don't, they don't they talk, talk too much. much. Small talk, talk he don't, don't they talk. talk. Sister, fam. Say, 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 say. Welcome. Oh boy, he don't they do too talk. Small talk he don't they do too talk, fam. And the balance. Since it, I holla. Hey, oh let me, let me, let me, let me. If you get money, come and be, I'll be you. Ah. You will define the pity. To watch amazing performances, you guys should tune in to The Voice Nigeria, connected by Airtel. Airtel, the smartphone network. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapic 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapic sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! Trust the Santa Fresh Liquid Field Gum to refresh your confidence instantly. Santa Fresh Liquid Field Gum. Trust the freshness. Revision classes on television for students in secondary schools in English and Mathematics will commence on the NTA. The revision classes will transmit Mondays to Fridays from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on the network service of the NTA. This is organized in preparation for the various national examinations and orders. This is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Education. The much anticipated UEFA Euro 2021 is finally here. Can Portugal defend the title they won four years ago as they face world champions France, Europe giants Germany, Spain, Italy and England? Catch all the action via live transmission, in-depth studio analysis, fixtures, results, updates and lots more on NTA, Africa's largest TV network. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Bola on 080-37044-286 or Idris on 080-34633-644. This broadcast is proudly brought to you by NTA in partnership with Media Business Solutions, MBS Sports.
Well, it's still good morning, Nigeria, on the network service of the NTA. Up next is the business news with uh, Kule Adeye. Exhibitors at the ongoing Made in Nigeria Expo to mark Nigeria at 60 have expressed optimism that the country will experience unprecedented growth in the quest for local content development if more Nigerians patronize locally made goods and services. The expo, which is witnessing the display of various locally made products, continues till June 19 in Abuja. Though we have to patronize foreign products, we are rich now, our culture is rich, we have our land is is blessed so we need to start encouraging nigerian grown products these products can compete anywhere in the world we have good packaging and the product inside the content is superb i'm sure of that most things are being imported because we feel we don't have capacity to carry out what we actually do so if we buy from ourselves and you know we have money to produce more if we can produce more it will improve the economy and to the details of tuesday's tradings on the floor of the exchange With business news, I'm Kunle Adeye. Thank you, Kunle, for that business package. Up ahead is Newspaper Review. Welcome, Bayo. Thank you, Isunaga. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Kiria. Yeah, Bayo. Yeah. Good it's morning, Good to see Nigeria. you here again today. Yes. All right, now let's uh, get started with the nation newspaper. I guess you have the punch there. Oh, yes. And let me get going with the newspaper, with the nation here. Um, above the mast head, we have um, three stories there. One is on page 28, and that says uh, Delta. Uh, we are expecting 4.2 million pounds Ibori linked loot. That's coming from the state government, I believe. And then um, uh, on page six, reps query whereabouts of seized 44 million dollars. Answer, watches, hands off. And on page 27, I've done my best for workers, says Nasarawa governor. And on page 31, COVID-19 vaccine, first dose jobs resume. Now, below the masthead, we have the following stories. Uh, lawyers turned cab drivers during just ended juice and strike. Details of that on page 28. APC explains Buhari's loans, PDP, in crisis. That's the rider there. Crisis of confidence. Inflation crippling economy, increasing poverty, says experts. That's the big story of the page, the main page, the front page of the nation newspaper. Mm -hmm. There's only one rather than that is uh, rate drops to 17.93% and prices are increasing rapidly, uh, severely impacting Nigerian households, says the World Bank. We have $10 billion in NLGN trend seven project to push up gas production, still on page five. And uh, on page six, Shumbanjo test drives assembled in Nigeria electric car. And finally, on the page, we have that's on page four. There's this story on soldiers arrest 73. Julian? All right, now to the Punch newspaper, above the nameplate of the Punch newspaper, inflation pushed 7 million Nigerians below poverty line. That's according to the World Bank. It's on page 25. Oshimbajo test rides locally assembled little car, says innovation, fantastic. It's on page 11. NLNG, train 7. $10 billion investment begins. Buhari warns against delay. Uh, details of that story is on page 25. How minister laundered $37 million through property deal? It's according to the EFCC chair. It's on page 11. 
Now, below the nameplates and first the lead story this morning on the Punch newspaper, military bombards bandits in northwest, north central forests. With the three riders, NAV bombed, killed 500 cows, 200 missing in Nasarawa, alleges Mayor Tiala. Reports of 1,000 cows killed unrealistic, according to NAV. Troops comb Kasana Forest. All that on page two of the Punch newspaper. Of course, the photo story there is that of the uh, newly uh, inaugurated uh, FRSC radio traffic station or traffic radio station. Uh, that's the, the vice president there being interviewed uh, by one of the presenters. All right, uh, below that we have pastor kidnapped by Boko Haram, eight months ago, freed in Brunei. It's on pages four and five. Gunmen shoot stadium manager to death in Jas. Mm. It's on page eight. Troops stop 73 Nasarawa men going to Imo with 47 Okadas. That's on page five. Other states frustrating our plans to reform our major system. That's on page 17. CEO absconds as Forex firm allegedly defaults 52 investors of 122 million naira. It's also captured on pages 4 and 5. Niger community residents raise 5 million motorcycles, free leaders' wives. Also on page 5. Let's begin by now. Thank you. Let's start with the story uh, from the point where you talked about uh, the Nigerian military and the police have taken the war to the hideouts of criminals following the bombardment of bandits in their hideouts in the northwest, north central and the northeast. This crackdown was ordered by President Muhammad Buhari uh, so that terrorists harassing farmers ha can be taken care of so that farmers can begin to go to their farms. The point says that the army, the air force and the police have attacked hideouts in Basari, Jibia, Damusa, Safana, Matazu and troops of Operation Wildstroke are also flushing out armed headers and militia from hideouts in Benue, Nasarawa and Taraba states. The operations in Sankera area, this is an area in Benue state, has now ensured that farmers can return home and begin to go back to their farms. There have been claims of uh, the Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria that there have been bombardments that have killed their cows. The Commissioner for Information, Culture and Tourism of Benue State, Mrs. Unguna Adingi, says no human life or cows were lost in the military operations at the boundary between Benue and Nasarawa. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Statistics says inflation dropped by 0.19% in the month of May 2021, dropping from 18.2% of April to 17.93%. Urban inflation still rose by 18.51%, while rural inflation uh, rose by 17.6%. The Director General of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Dr. Moda uh, Yusuf identified insecurity, cost of transportation, energy cost that is power of power supply, cost of power supply, and exchange rate depreciation among the drivers of inflation. And he says that to tackle inflation, there's a need to fix the supply side and the challenges on the challenges identified so that we can rein in uh, also physical de deficit. Meanwhile, the World Bank says that food prices accounted for over 60% of increase in inflation. It stressed that rising food prices have pushed estimated 7 million Nigerians below the poverty line in the year 2020. In a, a Nigeria development update, the World Bank spokesman, Mansur Nasir, said Nigeria's economy contracted by minus 1.8% instead of minus 3.2% that was forecast in 2020. He identified measures taken by government to protect the economy against the much dreaded uh, recession as having worked and reduced the impact. Although the economy has started to grow again, he says price increases in, is impacting negatively on Nigerian households. The World Bank says that it will, be, it will be essential to set policy foundations for a strong recovery. The World Bank says 7 million have been pushed down poverty in 2020, 
But you may be recall that on Democracy Day, President Muhammadu Buhari in address said 10 million Nigerians have been pulled out of poverty up to date. Then the other matter of concern is from the expressed by Minister of Information and Culture, Lajilai Mohamed. He says the social media blog platform suspended recently has formally written to Nigeria to seek dialogue. Lajilai Mohamed reiterated that the government position was that government will not tolerate any platform that will be used to destabilize the country. He says that uh, for them to resume, there must be an agreement as to what could be uh, accepted as a post. All such other social media platforms must also register in Nigeria as an entity licensed by the National Broadcasting Commission and they will be guided by the rules of licensing and they will also pay taxes to Nigeria. The minister, minister stressed that the regulation of the social media, the media has become a practice that most countries are now waking up to. He cited instances that France, in France, an online was fined 200 million euros for violating online advertisement. And the United Kingdom, uh, uh, there is also an, an, an initiative to impose fine on online, online me, uh, media for any abuses. Some nations that have done such include Singapore, Algeria, Pakistan, Turkey, and Australia. Even the European Union is also recommending a white paper on regulation of social media. Uh, we talked about the story of uh, the electric car. Mm. Vice President Professor Yemi Osibayu has described the Made in Nigeria electric car as fantastic. He drove the locally assembled electric car named Kona at the Eagle Square yesterday. Uh, he says that it was a very good drive. I am glad that this is assembled in Nigeria. You can charge, you can charge it anywhere. I think it's a very fantastic innovation fantastic product and I can tell because I just drove it. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Otumba Ni Adebayo, and the Director General of Nigeria Automotive Development Council, Jelani Aliu, were in attendance. But there have been reactions, trust Nigerians. Uh, some says they have, says that while it is a great innovation, I suggest mass production of such vehicle. Mm -hmm. Another said, is it a good business idea? to jettison the use of petrol vehicles when our main source of revenue is crude oil. Mm -hmm. Another says that, great one, let the federal government quickly make electricity stable in Nigeria. But there's a, the last one is a tongue-in-cheek. He says, to buy electric car, one would need a generator and fuel in the boots. <laughs> <laughs> Trust Nigerians. Well, that's really serious. <laughs> Well, you know, that's taking a cue from what the vice president said can be used anywhere in this country. Be charged it anywhere. Can be charged but anywhere. again, they are using the opportunity to draw attention to our concerns mm. about electricity well, being it, available it, it, everywhere. It cannot be recharged anywhere. Anywhere, I mean, there has to be provision for recharging of electric cars. Mm. Uh, in other climes, there are designated points, you know, for recharging, and uh, this another technology all, 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 all the same, you know, for you to be able to recharge the car that can take you to a longer distance. Because of course, when when you recharge and the, 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 uh, what to recharge discharges, then of course the car stops. Mm -hmm. All right, it's not like fuel, so you need to recharge uh, at certain points, you know, across the nation. That's how it's made elsewhere. You know, there are points, so recharging points, right? So you if you're making like filling stations, exactly like filling stations. No, but the vice president like say by the time there is mass production, mm. there will be charging points across uh, in anticipation. You recall that there was a launch whereby uh, there was a conversion of petrol cars mm. to gas using cars mm. and so that you can have cars that can be using petrol and gas as, as alternative sources of revenue uh, energy this time around now you have these electric cars by the time they are mass produced there will be charging points across the, the, the nation we, as a as a commercial sales point that so is all those if, if but trust nigeria if power is guaranteed well, yes just, uh, if there's outage of power you'll be able to recharge <laughs> the <laughs> the and that is what the nigerians recharge. are reacting about <laughs> but whatever it is it's uh, just borrowing the vice president's uh, statement it's, it's a fantastic innovation mm -hmm. and that's a good one really coming from nigeria and having to really join the league of uh, countries that are, you know, having uh, electric uh, cars. That's a good innovation. Yeah. That's really Let's great. Forget That's forget that it's, uh, it's an assemblage. And, uh, assemblage you know, and cost-effective yes, production <laughs> so that it is affordable. Mm. Mm. But, but that, well, there's no taking it away from Nigerians. Just only last week, there was also the Made in Nigeria 
uh, cell phone, you remember, that was presented to the President Muhammad Buhari. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if we put our noses to the grinding stone, mm -hmm. we can be very innovative. You can get them back. Remember in those days, 80s and before 80s, there were so many assembly plants in Nigeria. Lagos, Kano, Bauchi, Kaduna, yes. all these cars who rode in Nigeria yes. were yes. assembled yes. in this yes. country. Yes. But for over for the years, for they Kaduna, disappeared. Volkswagen in Lagos, mm. stay in Bauchi. Mm. Yes. And so, Anamco, was it Anamco in Anamco, Anambra? Anambra. Yes. 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 All right. You know, if that has been sustained, you know, by now, our, our people would have started the, you know, the re-manufacturing of cars by, by themselves. Mm -hmm. you know, because when, when you assemble, you're able to study the components, you know, the, the parts of, of the cars. And of course, if uh, Jukuta State Complex, you know, uh, was also working, uh, that would have been also assisted Nigeria in terms of uh, fabricating or molding some of the car engine parts. Uh, like piston and rings, metal and, and what have you. These are the real components of the of uh, of an engine of a car. Oh, right. Uh, so yes, I agree with you. You see, when you assemble, mm. you import what is called CKD mm. component parts is important. Then you assemble them. Yeah. But even when we were assembling uh, auto in Nigeria, part of the program was that some of the parts, like the glass, mm. some uh, flat sheet metal, will be produced locally from Ajaukuta. But unfortunately, those did not you know quite materialize. But a lot of the plastics components were also byproducts from our petrochemical thing car is industry. Uh, roadside mechanics also assemble. They do, they do uh, your engine, they can rework your engine, they yes. can overhaul your engine. Even the one we call panel beaters, they can assemble a, a, a car any way, any day, any time. Because of course they already have an understanding of the parts of, of, of cars. You know, the panel beaters, for instance, for the body of the car and for the engine, the roadside mechanics can do anything with the engine in terms of assemblage, in terms of you know dismantling. Well, and of course, trust, trust Nigerians yeah. now. We are good at you. almost everything, just for us to harness or for the government to harness that, and let's get going. All the same now. We thank you so much, Adebayo, for, for coming on this me. program this morning. Tomorrow is going to be another day. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria. We're reaching you from the Nigerian Television Authority, and I will now take a break. The program continues in a while. Stay with us. As Oni of Ife, as someone who cares about the well-being and safety of our people, it's time for each and every one of us to realize that COVID-19 is real and it has killed millions of people around the world. Scientists have developed this vaccine. The vaccine is safe for everyone and it contains no microchip, nor can it alter our DNA. However, we must continue to stay safe and stay clean, wear face masks, clean our hands on a regular basis, and try as much as possible to avoid a very large crowd and gathering. For those who choose to be vaccinated, it will go a long way in protecting yourself and your loved ones from COVID-19. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youth and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together.
the much anticipated UEFA Euro 2021 is finally here. Can Portugal defend the title they won four years ago as they face world champions France, Europe giants Germany, Spain, Italy and England? Catch all the action via live transmission, in-depth studio analysis, fixtures, results, updates, and lots more on NTA, Africa's largest TV network. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Bola on 080-37044-286 or Idris on 080-34633-644. This broadcast is proudly brought to you by NTA in partnership with Media Business Solutions, MBS Sports. You're still watching Good Morning Nigeria, reaching you from the NTA. Our focus uh, is on managing inflation in Nigeria, and as a prompt for our conversation this morning, there is a background report put together by Oyemi Ajayi. According to the Consumer Price Index reports recently released by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, Nigeria's inflation rate stood at 18.12% in April 2021, indicating the first decline in headline inflation in about 20 months. The inflation dropped by 1.01% in May to 17.93%. This is said to represent a 0.05% point decline when compared to 18.17% recorded in March 2021. This surely has serious effect on the growth and development of the Nigerian economy. Price instability becomes inevitable, resulting to increase in food prices aside the reduction in the value of the Naira currency, just to mention a few. Part of the effect is the eventual loss of jobs by many. As a way of managing inflation in Nigeria, Experts suggested government's use of wage and price controls, but it is believed that these will cause recession and job losses. Also, employment of contractionary monetary policy by reducing the money supply within an economy via decreased bond prices and increased interest rates, amongst others. Some have also suggested direct or indirect reduction in the money supply through policies that encourage reduction in money supply. Other suggestions include full operation of infrastructural facilities to attract more investors, both foreigners and locally. Analysts insist fiscal policy and wage controls will also help manage inflation if properly utilized. How far has Nigeria gone in ensuring that the country exits inflation and what else can be done to achieve this? These are questions for guests already seated in the studio. And to discuss the topic, first uh, let me introduce here in the studio Professor Ahmed Bawa Bello, a professor of accounting at uh, Molibo Adamawa University, Yola. We're glad to have you this morning, sir. Good morning. It's a pleasure having me. All right. And also with us here in Abuja studio is uh, a regular uh, guest, Ni Akinsiju, investment and financial analyst. It's always a pleasure to have you. My pleasure as always. Program. Thank you for having me. And also joining us uh, via Zoom is Professor Kenneth, a development economist. Uh, thank you for joining us. He's joining us from... Uh... No, he's coming now. He's coming in. Professor, welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Well, uh, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure indeed to have you join us this morning. And uh, models of uh, inflation have uh, evolved over time. And economists like you, you know, have actually uh, become more knowledgeable when it comes to the issue of uh, inflation. In Nigeria here, monetary and fiscal policies plus other measures, you know, have been put in place to cushion the effect of inflation in, in the country. But first of all, let's uh, begin with uh, Ken Ife. How have these policies and measures impacted on the current inflationary pressure that we are currently experiencing in Nigeria? Well, what I would say is that 
the insecurity, the current level of insecurity in the country has overshadowed every other policy. And, you know, people are not even patient. They don't want to listen to any other thing. It's just the, the pervasive impact of insecurity on all factors of production and all means of exchange. We've seen that. But when you come to the inflation itself, there are two areas that you look at inflation. Money supply is traditionally uh, always there to push in, to manage inflation. It used to be the most. But in the context of what we are seeing in Nigeria today, uh, there are very, very big questions about the extent to which um, monetary policy can actually deal with what we see to be largely structural issues. Now, let's, let's, let's unpack that. The monetary aspect is domestic uh, money supply, which is okay. But then where are you sending that money to? You send to send that through the banking and financial system, and then it gets into the hands of investors and domestic uh, people. But over 100 million Nigerians are, are in poverty. Over 80 million are below poverty line. The, the, the banks are not actually lending to that real sector. So if you, if you go and focus on you know, playing with interest rates and base rates and all that, who are you actually targeting? So I, I put that by the side. The other element of money supply that comes in is Forex, foreign exchange supply into our system. Now, the factors that affect that are exogenous to our system. You know, they have to do with the crude production volume, the crude price uh, uh, prevailing, and 90% and of that Forex are dependent on that crude. And we have very little control on that. And you can see what really happens once there's shortage of Forex, you can see people running to the other side to get money from uh, black market, and then they import at high cost and they pass through straight away that inflation to the consumers. But that is not by any means the only issue. We have so many hostages to this fortune that we have, look at uh, importing petroleum products. Over 30% of that our receipt is goes away again to go and transport it outside, pay for it to be processed, and then come back here, and then you have subsidy on it. So you can see competition on that same forex that we have. Okay. Now come to the other side, structural factors. Agriculture is structural. And we know that when you look at inflation aggregates, agriculture looms very large because over 23% is the farm produce element of it. Then you know that power is, is a very important structural element. The prices of power, the shortage of power, the damage it does to the industry, the input cost that it pushes up, and then not to talk of the tariff that is that's gone up. People are now seeing double the, the, the tariff on, on, on electricity. And these are people who are producing and providing services. They are seeing double an increase, 100 percent increase in their in their bills. Then of course you have other issues like exchange rates. I have mentioned the impact that it has on on uh, on, 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 on inflation. And then you also have transport costs, which is dependent on the rising cost of PMS. And the transport cost is just unacceptable. 20% of the input cost is transport. 30% of the input cost is power. So um, these are much more structural issues than monetary. So that's why I'm saying that we have to watch the limit of monetary policy in tackling the current inflation that we are having right now. Oh, many thanks, sir. <clears throat> Professor Kenife, uh, the Buhari administration has, it's one of the administrations that came in with uh, not really having a very good from the beginning um, to date. And of course, it's being compounded by, you know, so many factors. He has mentioned some of them. And uh, this include the falling oil prices. And of course, you find the pandemic here. You find, you know, the, the, the recessions, two of them that came in were able to get out of it. And uh, the insecurity, which is, really, which is really hard, hitting hard on the economy. We're trying to manage the inflation. All these have just snowballed into a very serious problem for the common man at home. Trying to buy, you know, you know daily needs becomes a problem. What, in your opinion, would be a major solution to this problem. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think uh, Prof, uh, Prof Ken had been able to highlight some of the issues you know, mm -hmm. at play. Uh, but I, I think uh, more than that is to uh, zero in 
on uh, the major driver of uh, inflation as it were, either historically or in contemporary times in Nigeria, is our food baskets. Uh, in 2019, it was estimated that uh, uh, household expenditure, uh, food took about 56.6% of uh, household expenditure. And uh, the World Bank report recently uh, uh, estimated 60% you know, of food expenditure. So what, what that translates to is once the prices of food are, it's, it's, are on the increase, inflation would also increase. So it's, it's a direct uh, relationship as it were. Uh, so the, the, the whole focus would be on how to drive uh, more food production, you know, and of course, uh, in doing that, you also see uh, inflation falling. Uh, we, in the current, <clears throat> in the two uh, consecutive figures we've had of, uh, of inflation rate, uh, April and May, mm. we have seen a turn you know, in uh, inflation, in food inflation rates, uh, from 22.93 thereabouts in uh, in uh, March uh, to 22, uh, 22.7 in uh, uh, in April, and now 22.28 in uh, what you call it in May. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, with that, we are seeing a reflection of that movement, of that downward movement in the headline inflation, as it were. You know, from uh, the uh, 18 point to 18.12 and now to 17.93. It's principally driven, you know, by the uh, decline in food, in food baskets. So what, what I'm saying essentially is there's now a need to seriously focus, you know, on, uh, on food production. That's, that's the, the first and the last of it. Uh, all the essentials, uh, all the other factors, uh, forex, uh, power, and, and all that, have, uh, of course, implication. But if we have, if it's clear that we, the, the major burden you know, that drives in inflation, the major driver that, uh, that's, uh, that uh, increases uh, inflation rates is food, that is where we need to put attention. And to, the, to, to a large extent, at the federal government level, we have mm -hmm. seen what the federal government is doing, the Ministry of Agriculture is doing, uh, the central bank is doing with the anchor borrowers program and all that and in fact the protective the protection policies of government you know uh, keeping imported foods away from nigeria and of course trying to uh, to carry out, to carry along the the local farmers and all that so if the federal government is doing so much i think there's a need for state for the subnational you know to be involved in this thing as as a deliberate policy you know of states at their level. And then more than that, I think the local governments have been out of the loop, you know, in the whole agricultural uh, value chain, as it were. I, the local governments areas are the, uh, the tire of government that are closest you know, to, the, uh, to the people, one. And you have about 450 local governments that are rural-based local governments. And I think in whatever we are doing, there is a need to go through the local governments. There are agricultural departments in these local governments. And there are supervisors for agriculture too. But I wonder the kind of work they are doing, you know, because there is no... We don't, we don't get to see what the local government is doing in the first time. In fact, that type of government, I mean, we have said it time and again, that is non-existent. And the truth is that until we structure our, either our political or economic uh, uh, or however structure we are looking at it, without the, uh, the functionality of the local government, we will still be grasping, you know, at, uh, at non-issues. So I, I, in, in, um, in correcting what we have now, one, uh, the, the issue, the focus, of course, must be on what to do to boost food production. And in doing that, the local government must be of essence. How but do you I, want, excuse me, how do you want the states to come into this? So when we talk about the local government, well, of course, they are there, but still they are still trying to get their feet, trying to get the independence they require and then have everything through to them. So we can at least excuse them for a while, but the states have there, you mentioned them. And how do you want the states to come into this? Since the federal government is doing a lot through the CBN. Yeah, well, if, if the states are replicating what 
what the federal government is doing. Mm. You know, it would impact, of course, it will be at a lower level, you know, but it will still impact the, uh, the states. Uh, don't forget that is the configuration, I mean, it's the, it's the collective of the state that makes the nation, you know. So if you have the states doing these things at different level, one, you have the opportunity of specialization. You know, there are, there are states that are naturally inclined towards certain agricultural products. So if they focus on those special inclination, you know, it would, of course, as a collective, uh, bring more uh, food to the table, as it were, at, and at cheaper rate, you know. But the local government is still essential to this. Yeah. The state can still not do anything without a local government. The federal government can still not do much without local government. So it's the advocacy is to energize the local government to play a role in what we are talking about. Well, uh, actually, the local government uh, aspect of supporting here is very, very uh, essential. But uh, as, as it were, uh, we have seen that uh, our council areas are somehow in comatose for a while now, knowing, of course, the reasons because of uh, uh, the inability of state governors to actually uh, allow the local governments to exist as a tier of government in terms of a practical existence, you know, being able to uh, be alive to their responsibility as council areas of this country. Right, thanks. Uh, let's uh, go to Professor Ahmed Bawabelo. Um, a number of issues have been raised, you know, concerning the inflationary pressure that we have currently in the country. There are issues of uh, structural elements like agriculture, power, manufacturing, uh, and what have you. But I also like you to come from uh, this angle. Uh, there's a close link, you know, between money supply and uh, inflation. Now, what should be the mechanisms for controlling money supply in order to cushion the effect of uh, inflation in a nation like Nigeria? Well, um, I, before we go into that, as a rider to what Mustani said, uh, you need synchronization of policies between the federal, state, and the local government. Whether the state government allow the local government operate or not. Once there is synchronization of policies, planning, you have economic recovery growth plan, state governments or state planning commission or ministry for planning, budget and planning should follow from the economic recovery growth plan of the federal government. As he is saying, the major focus should be agriculture. So which means that all the states where possible, except for those that may not have adequate land for agriculture, should follow the line of agriculture in their own way. In order to avoid duplication of effort, they should see what the federal government is doing so that they should do something different. They should guide the local government in also doing that. So if you come back to the question that you ask, while we we'll put it theoretically uh, that uh, what you need to control money supply. That is the responsibility of the uh, central bank governor, uh, uh, central bank, and I believe they are doing their best I, by controlling the monetary policy, policy rate, uh, which is the interest rate, you know, uh, by increasing or decreasing. One thing that I became happy was the reduction in the interest rate for fixed deposit, treasury bills, and others. The government was providing incentive for people not to invest. By the time you put your treasury bills at 13, 14%, people would not be motivated to invest. Rather, the money that they have obtained, legitimately or otherwise, will now be taken again for investment. So by, by, by bringing down, it would now force people to uh, go for investment. So theoretically, if you increase your interest rate, that will discourage people from borrowing. Also, the cash reserve ratio will now be increased so that money will not be available to uh, the banks. But the government, over time, including this government, they've been doing that. So there is fundamental thing that we need as a people and as Nigerians. We need to face realities. We need to understand that certain things are bound to happen so we cannot escape from that prior to now the price of agricultural product their prices were low for the reason that we import rice we import most of these things so because of the cost of production out of the country is low 
for sure, import price, after import, the price will be much lower than what we're having. But we cannot continue to import. We have to take action, which the government has taken now, by stopping the importation of rice and other commodities. Naturally, you expect that these things will grow. So it's only that we need to have that patience to wait, to allow for the price of agricultural product to grow to an equilibrium, equilibrium level, such that farmers will be able to invest even without the support of government or rather without subsidy, so that they will recover from the sales of the product. I was uh, of the opinion that, look, uh, if a price of rice should go to 50,000 naira per bag, what is the problem? If you have problem, go back to farm. The farmer will be willing to do that. And because he's going to make profit, that will make move people back to the farm. And it has its own multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. If we have, say, 10 million people in the farm, because the price of agricultural product is good, it means that 20 million, 10 more million people will now move to farming. And therefore, the, the demand for tractors will increase, the demand for input for agriculture will increase, and vice versa, the, the, you know, multiplier effect on, on that. So really, we don't expect that when we are coming out of COVID-19, and we will not have the kind of inflation that we're having. It's natural, it's normal to have that. You don't expect that with the kind of insecurity that we have in this country, that you cannot have the kind of uh, inflation that we're having. Virtually, if you go to the Northeast, you cannot move out of the local government headquarters for like 10 kilometers. It's a problem because either you either be kidnapped or you'll be killed or whatever, it, on, so, on so many things. So as a result of that, people don't go to farm. What do you expect? natural increase in price. So whatever policies that you have taken theoretically to control the volume of money in circulation. Then another issue is our mindset, our kind of people. Whatever policy that the government is bringing, people try to beat that policy. I am sure the president of the country and the CBN governor, the closest thing that is at their heart, there are two things. That is to control the exchange rate and to encourage agriculture. But if you go down practically, it needs to be regulated, it needs to be checked properly, in the sense that the loans they were giving, or they are giving, facilities that are being provided to improve agriculture, you'll be surprised. It doesn't get to the farmers. So as a result, these people are not, the people that are collecting, are not using it for that purpose. What are they going to use it? They are using it for consumption. And by the time you have too much money in circulation, what is supposed to be channeled through a productive purpose is being used for consumption, naturally the price uh, will, will, ha will have to go on. So therefore, there is need, in fact, if you allow me to say that, there is need for CBN to appoint auditors to undertake forensic audit on the disbursement that have been made in order to support agriculture. Also, there is need to also check even the money that has been provided to provide a financial support to medium and small scale industries. These people at the grassroots don't get it. When you go, they will celebrate five, six people after uh, the, the fanfare, that's all. The money doesn't get there and it's better accumulated in one place. What is the result? Naturally, you see that. And that is why you see the urban inflation is at almost all the time higher than the rural, uh, rural inflation. The same thing also, if you look at the policy now, I, I don't want to be a person that um, is not being optimistic, <laughs> but the way this government is defending the value of our NERA, I am afraid what is going to happen. If the governor is not there and we have a new government, we pray that we have that. And it is because, as I said, our attitude. People go for dollar, not because they want to import or they want to process for export. No. They want dollar to just keep. So now dollar is becoming product. 
People are buying products, whatever it is. Change the official rate of dollar to 500 naira per, uh, per, per dollar. The black market rate would shoot to 700. Move official rate to 700. It will still move to 900 because people want to exploit the others. So if we don't have a change of mindset, and it's, it's rather unfortunate, even our elites, for they exploit based on the circumstances they have, uh, they found themselves. Look at the price of cement. At the, to at the point in time, it was 2,500, 2,200. All of a sudden, it moved up to 3,000. We were told that they were carrying maintenance here and there. But what happened? Even after the maintenance, the price of uh, seven per bag is all over 4,000 naira now. So it's exploitation. How we are exploiting us. Anybody that has the opportunity, instead of having to be patriotic, to see how we are going to change the country, rather, we are trying to exploit the system. But Therefore, I there has to be a practical check on ground to see that we fight corruption. We see that in every aspect of it, we fight it. We need to be realistic. As I was saying, we were discussing outside this place. You say that you are paying the director of finance, director of procurement, 150,000, 250,000. Theoretically, they will tell you that. It's not a just justification for you to be corrupt. But I, me, I myself, and, and any other person, we know by the time we pursue the kind of dress in you, uh, on you as a director, anything, we know that your salary cannot afford that. By the time we go to your house, we know the kind of house you live in. Your salary cannot afford that. And everyone knows that. And we say that we are fighting corruption. It's not possible. And one man cannot fight corruption. We have to do it. So fundamentally, some of these economic things, no matter what you do, Theoretically, as long as our kind of mindset, it is what it is, we are not, we are not going to go anywhere. Trump, so, it, it, therefore, <laughs> there is need for reorientation of our people. We need to change, our mindset needs to be changed. We need to be patriotic so that whatever government is doing, we need to accept that. We need to take it in good faith and also follow to, to the letter. Prof, you, you have actually uh, expanded uh, uh, this uh, conversation, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> bringing in uh, corruption and all of that. But again, I want to believe uh, in what you're saying with respect to the fact that, uh, you know, the inflation is taking place in Nigeria and all the issues that we raised are also of concern because, of course, we have to live and exist as, as human beings. Yeah. And uh, the, Central, the, the World Bank just said that uh, we need critical reforms, critical reforms uh, due to this inflation and, of course, uh, accelerate uh, the recovery that we're talking about, the economic recovery we're talking about. From all we have said, it does appear that uh, whatever policy or measures being put in place by government may not necessarily work. The theoretical aspect. So what I'm saying, mm. we need to be practical now. Mm. We need to come out. All right, as I'm still saying, you know, I, I rendered my advice to one. We need to be productive. We need to make our people productive. I gave you an example to say that part of the practical thing that I have in my head is that look, if, for example, we have a state with about 30,000 uh, staff in the payroll, and you know that you can make do with 5,000. So why should you keep the remaining 25,000? We are not saying that sack 25,000. But in being creative, what you do is all right. Ask 25,000. Go back home. Stay at home. We'll be paying you salary without doing anything, just go and stay for five months. After five months, by rank, say for example, we say director. A director, we need you to give us 10 bags of rice in a year. Since you are at home sitting down doing nothing, we need 10 bags of rice. And so on and so forth by, based on the rank. So if the director is not willing to provide 10 bags of rice, then we will now go to the public. Who is willing to give us 10 bags of rice? I will be paying him the salary of equivalent to that of director. I believe there will be many that will be willing to do that. So, and therefore, the director will have no option after receiving five months free, free salary. Yeah. We're asking you to bring only uh, 10 bags of rice. You have to accept that. So, by the time we have that, which means we are making you productive, two things will happen. It's either you are going to buy 10 bags of rice and bring to us, 
or you are going to farm 10 bags of rice and bring to us. In any way, we have succeeded in reducing your salary. If otherwise, we say that we are going to reduce the salaries of directors by 10 bags of rice, even as a down, I am complaining that the salary is not enough for a director, we are saying we are going to do NLC, will not allow that to happen. But if I say sit down doing nothing, just give me 10 bags of rice, which means I'm making you productive. After a year, I can increase that to 20. If you are not willing to, let me ask the general public, who is willing to give me 20 bucks, I will give you the salary. Mm -hmm. So eventually, we will come to a level that will say that, okay, you give us the rice, the number of bucks of rice equivalent to your salary, mm -hmm. which means you are now being productive. So without productivity, we will still be having, we like free money. They are very hardworking Nigerians. By the time you go, go, go out, go to any street in Lagos, uh, Portacourt, and others, you see people working hard to earn. But come to others. You have a significant number of people that don't do anything. They like free money. Give somebody 10,000 naira. He looks at, he'll look at it as if it's, it's, it's nothing. But for me, as I always say, I, when I look at 10,000 Naira, I don't look at it. I look at what 10,000 Naira will do. I'm building a house. How many blocks will I get from 10,000 Naira? So by the time people feel that such kind of money is nothing, eh, so, and by the time we also continue, uh, sorry to say, uh, politicians continue to dash money, people will come, people will continue to be lazy and people will continue to be dependent on the government. Uh, Professor Ba, we'll come yeah. back to these critical issues later on. It seems as if there are some innovations and initiatives you have in your head which you think um, could be put forward to, you know, uh, managers of our economy, indeed Nigeria, and what I see to it, that we manage the inflation and then manage our country well. Let's cross over to Professor Jennifer. You've had uh, the prof uh, speak about critical ways of trying to get out of the you know, inflation, and yet yeah, it's true. You also had um, Nia Kinseju providing some solutions to that. What would you add to what they say in trying to find a solution to this inflation and making Nigerians more productive, keep in mind that we cannot continue the way we are continuing in order to get to the promised land? Now, let's get down to business. If you look at the inflation, with the food uh, sub-basket index hanging on on 22.72 and the core index is 12.74 there is a there is a gap of 10 percent now that gap of 10 percent i'll tell you where it goes to the actual food sub-basket index has two components one is the processed food and the other one is farm produce the processed food is also part of the core inflation because the core inflation is all inflation indices minus farm produce. So it is actually the farm produce that is dragging the country and inflation by a whole margin of 10%. So let's get down to the roots now. There are two areas, the demand side and the supply side of the farm produce. Before we get into those two, let's locate central bank on what it has done. What Central Bank has done is to provide the structure and the foundation for a new uh, commercial agricultural system in Nigeria. It has been a complete transformation of our agricultural system. If you remember what it looked like in 2010, 11, 12. Now, what has happened is this. The, agri the, the subsistence agriculture we have known for years with antiquated technology and you know, people are carrying all of that. All of that have gone with digital access to finance they've all gone what we have is that they transformed our our commercial farmers to come our subsistence farmers to commercial outgrowers modernized because when you look at the anchor borrowers program is giving them hybrid seeds uh, all the inputs mechanization services all the way to extension services fertilizer that is fit for purpose herbicides insecticides and all of that organized with anchors we have uh, production uh, companies, processing companies that act as anchors. You have retail chain, but we have also exporters. Now, the export one is the one we need to pay a lot of attention to because that will bring the foreign exchange and balance our misery. 
on, on the forex uh, area. Like, let's come down to the, the two the two districts. One, on the demand side of our agriculture, what we have is this. Nigeria is feeding over 300 million people when our population is 200 million and 8 million. This is because we are actually feeding the Niger Republic, the Mali, the Burkina Faso, a part of Benin, part of Northern Cameroon. These people are taking our food, and you can, nothing you can do about that because they are protected by ECOWAS Treaty of free movements of, uh, of primary produce without tax. And they're not even paying for this in exports with dollars. They're paying for it in Naira. They're settling with Naira. Now, number two in this uh, demand side is this. Five years ago, one Naira was buying uh, uh, three sefa. Now, one Naira is buying 1.2 tracks uh, sefa, which means that in the eyes of the Francophone country surrounding us, our money has been devalued by over 67 percent so there is there's no incentive for them to grow anything anymore buy nigerian produce divide it and send them back to nigeria three more four months later and sell it 100 percent of the price so these are some of the issues you can't run away with those they are not going to go away soon but now turn to the supply side and see what else can we do given what the insecurity situation across the six geopolitical zones have brought to us one of our response has been increased mechanization, which is Uncle Brewer bringing in, which is good, which means in the, in the limited agroecological footprint, we can still intensify and produce twice more. Then there are other things that are done, high yield uh, produce, uh, seeds and all of that, doubling and tripling our produce, uh, our production uh, productivity. You know, you have one, one, one ton per hectare of uh, cotton going up to seven, six, five tons, all that stuff. And then cassava doubling or tripling from 18 tons to 50 tons. So all of that. But then let's look critically at what else could be done. Because I'm concerned that why CBN is doing all of this and has transformed 3 million farmers to commercial farmers, we have 44 million MSMEs in this country. So how do you get access to finance to all the others? So we need to not only deal with moving money to the market because in the end of the day they have to be able to go to the market to to get their load to, to for the for the long term but Sibion has also tried to do a lot of things to push more money into the market space so that the, the banks are able to lend but we need to do more on sustainability how do you get the state governments the local governments to engage and more big private sector to get in so that they can drive the program if CBN decides to exit this program and then that is where we connect with all the things my colleagues are saying. There are 774 local governments in Nigeria. 1,000 hectares per local government means we can bring 774,000 local uh, hectares into production within a year. What are they going to produce it on? They can produce it on natural products that they have the greatest advantage. And the connection can now be made with NEPC. I've spoke to the, the, the CEO of NEPC. I said, make this link. Let's have export anchors so that your one product, the local government, can sit in. Now, you can now drive the local governments that are coming in with 1,000 to some of the export products or produce or even cassava, whatever it is that they can produce efficiently. You can make that link so you have a solid base of the pyramid producing for our exports. And it is not rocket science, but look at the figures. If normally between 150,000 naira to 500,000 naira is what we lend per hectare, depending on the crop. So let's take an average of 200,000 Naira per hectare. Now, that means that if you use 200,000 Naira per hectare, one local government borrows 200 million to do one hectare, 1,000 hectares. That is not much money. The whole 774 local governments will borrow 154 billion Naira to do 1,000 hectare per local government. That is 774,000 hectares. That is, that is still normal compared to what we are lending right now but you have to use that to get them in now i've spoken to so many governors about why are they not investing in agriculture and you know what they said to me one that they don't want to uh, guarantee loan and then the farmers will run away because it's guaranteed by the state number two they don't have the borrow, the, lend, the borrowing headroom to enable them bring the ispo to support their borrowing from the central bank now these exact these reasons are legitimate they are legitimate. So what I did for one of the governors is to give him a formula that shows how you can use, because every government, this 774,000 hectares, we have more than that. We have almost 1 million hectares owned by state governments that have been acquired. So what I did for one state government is to say, okay, 
you have 30,000 hectares that already been acquired by you, used for a variety of things. Let's get the farmers to go in, go in there, one man, one hectare, one farmer, one hectare, so that you don't need to guarantee anybody's loan. So they will borrow under and borrowers, and then they have their money, and you just sit there and maybe collect rent and then give them some infrastructure. So it is so, and CBN likes the, the program that I drew up. So it is so easy to get states to line up to use their assets to engage the farmers in the value chain without having to uh, need any any ISPO, without having to guarantee anybody's loan because they are the, the obligor. The farmers are the obligor under that arrangement. And the CBN lends because they have the, the BVN, uh, Biometric Bank Education, and they also have the satellite coordinates of those one, one hectare. So it's win-win for everybody. And then when the local government does the same or follows on that bandwagon, they are responding to export promotion drive. One, one product, one one state and it, it will be transformation in this country this agriculture will solve the problem but we must hit the ground running and make sure that sustainability across the entire spectrum so that if the cbn decides maybe because of a new leadership or whatever to exit this development finance we don't come crashing down that's an uh, an elaborate uh, analysis of what can be done and from all, all we have said this morning everything tilts towards agriculture how to revamp agriculture how to take agriculture to the next level but from ken ife's explanation cbn uh, has done a great deal of job in terms of ensuring that they will lift agriculture uh, for where it, it was not to where it should be. And uh, from all indications, uh, agriculture has really grown, you know, with, 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 with time. Um, Ni, you, you were the first to mention the issue of uh, the subnationals being part of the package in terms of uh, uh, keying into the policies of federal government with respect to this issue of uh, inflation in the country. Now, what are other formats? Ken has just given us a, a format, you know, uh, whereby a state government can engage farmers without actually uh, being responsible for the loans they're going to you know, you know, get from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now, what other forms of, uh, um, or other approach that could be uh, used to assure that uh, uh, agriculture is uh, um, welcomed by state governments who could now you know, take a serious part in ensuring that uh, all local government areas in the states are now Part of the agricultural package that we're talking about because uh, from all you have explained this morning the issue is hinged on agriculture because of course there's a surge in demand for agricultural produce and that is why in the urban areas we have a higher inflation rate there, there will be a surge don't also forget that our population is increasing uh, as a prof noted uh, the whole of the west african sub-region is dependent on the uh, on the nigerian food uh, market as it were uh, but again nigeria has a capacity to feed the whole of the west african region in fact it should be an incentive you know for 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 uh, our farmers as it were because of course the more the demand you know you expect supply to start running after demand until you get that uh, get, get to that uh, equilibrium, equilibrium level so for me i i don't see that as a challenge what what is challenging is how do we calibrate the system you know to meet up with this demand it's it is a good economic situation when you have high demand. It means that there is a need for higher supply. You know? And of course, when supply meets demand, it increases wealth for whoever the stakeholders are in the environment. Now, going forward, the, the, the subnationals are so important in this chain, as it were, because by constitutional uh, provisions, they are the owners, they are the custodians of land. In fact, what the, the federal government and the CBN are doing is peripheral engagement. The core of engagement should be at the level of the subnational, because it's, it, the, the, the federal government does not own specific land within the subnational space. So it's a, so it's a, it's a state government that can determine the kind of land it wants and what it wants to do with it. You know, and so to that extent, I, I think those, I mean, that I will be taking from Prof's uh, 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 recommendation that, that should, we should also start having farm estates, you know, so delineated by state governments and say, okay, in this uh, part of my state, this is what I want to use it for. 
agriculture. And for this agricultural venture, I want this kind of produce, you know, to be produced, I mean, to be farmed on this, on this land, you know. And of course, you, you, give, you give that out at concessionary level. Again, the, the local government comes into, in, into consideration there. We cannot run away from it. And I think there should be a strong advocacy you know, on what the, the role of the local government. If we are, we, as we are sitting, we are sitting without on, on, on a structure that lacks foundation. The local government is supposed to be a foundation. In fact, not even a local government, the world. The smaller the unit that we can engage with, you know, geographically and demographically, the better for us. So, uh, the, if you have all equipment, all incentives in place, Without extension workers, people with higher level of enlightenment that, are, that can engage the farmers we are talking about, we won't be able to go anywhere. And who relates with the, with the farmers at that level? Today we are talking of less than 40,000 extension workers you know, engaging with how many farmers? And of course, we, we are saying there are still a lot of potentials for farmers out there. The, the Uncle Brewer's program has been able, be able to give us a, a register of three point something million farmers. I, and I know because we are yet to fully mechanize, we'll be using more hands on the farm. So we need more farmers, you know. And to do that, you need people that can also by engagement, by participatory engagement, give the farmers direction, give the farmers, you know, uh, updates, enlightenment on contemporary modern ways of farming. Those are extension workers. And you cannot have extension workers effective, you know, effectively on ground without the involvement of the local governments. You are posting extension workers from Abuja to my village in Idome, to my village somewhere in Ondo State. They don't know anywhere, you know, it's, it's, it's like sending somebody to, to a strange land does not understand the culture, does not understand the attitude, you know, of the people, does not even understand the history of farming in that, in that area. So you need someone who have direct engagements, who have a historical linkage, you know, with the land to be able to effectively engage people and, of course, encourage people to, to do more farming. So the, the, for me, the whole thing is not even about mechanization. You can, if we don't have the resources, to mechanize because it's about big money. We have the people, so why don't we properly engage the people in a way that they are better informed to use modern ways of, uh, of farming to produce more? Uh, well, thank you, Nia uh, Akinsiju, uh, for that insight. But um, I think, um, lest we dwell so much on agriculture, Professor Bauer, let's look at other aspects of inflation. It's yeah. normally generally referred to as, you know, a situation where, you know, fewer goods normally chase a lot of money in the market. Yeah. That's primarily... So, so many money, but fewer goods. <laughs> yeah. Now, as, but when we look still, at... I'm still a rider. I, I get your point. Mm. On I just wanted to add a little. That All is right. talking about other factors that causes this inflation, this kind of trend. Yeah. When you look at power supply in this country, that's one great factor. When you look at the prices of, uh, you know, petroleum products, especially for transportation of things and goods and services, you know, when these produce have been, both these products have been produced, all this add up to the price at the end of the day, and there you find it going higher. We were discussing yesterday. We say, okay, there are lots of things in the market, and people say there is no money. Now, how comes that you find out today that there is inflation, which means? There is no much money in the market, and there are no and there are enough goods, but still the prices are high. Yeah, uh, still it still gets back to what I said earlier: corruption. But uh, as a rider to what, let me make a comment on uh, the comment I made with respect to uh, the opportunities of demand. Mm -hmm. uh, really. Uh, the consumption from Mali, Niger, Chad, and others is really opportunity. It's a good thing. Uh, for them to demand for the value of our for the value of our currency is lower than theirs is also a good thing 
That is what we want. In fact, that is one of the essence of devaluation of currency in order to attract people to come and buy from you. Mm -hmm. So by the time the demand is there, it means that people will be engaged to produce more. It's an incentive to to the country. All that is required now is for us to see how we are going to produce, produce more. Yeah. Uh, and all going back now to what you have said, what is going to these countries is not only uh, the farm produce, but including the finished goods. If you see the consumption of what is going, the finished product that is going to the, is, is significant. Mm. So it's also good and it's an incentive. Uh, inflation, we are saying that there is no money, products are there, and things are going up. Yes. When people get easy money, they don't mind how they spend the money. And also, as I've said earlier also, our attitude to foreign product, we need to encourage consumption of locally manufactured product. So, uh, when you relate to, again, the price of petroleum and other infrastructure, you can cumulatively put them together as a cost of production. These are the items that drive cost of production high. And normally, one of the major determinants of price in price system is the cost of production. You cannot sell below your cost of production. And naturally, uh, when a tariff, electricity tariff is going up, a petroleum problem is going up, you have no option. And also, the system that we have, we need to also understand the reality here again that you don't expect the price of PMS to come down any soon, except until when we start producing what we can consume 100% locally. Also, uh, the government in advance should put also policies and issues on ground to check the exploitation so that uh, we don't have one or two private refineries and we now come to have a repeat of what is happening with uh, cement, such that they will now have the monopoly and at any time they will just increase the price of, uh, uh, of PMS. So, but as, as it is, it's natural because when people buy dollar and keep, buy dollar and keep, because the money they get is through corruption. So, the price of dollar will naturally keep on increasing. And that is what you need to import some of the, uh, the, uh, your own PMS. You export PMS on dollar. You import PMS on dollar. The value of your currency is, incre uh, is decreasing. You don't expect anything. There has to be increase in the PMS. That is why there has to be subsidy. Let me give you an example, a scenario. Supposing you are buying a liter at one dollar and the exchange rate is 100 naira. So, the person that is importing now is, has to use 200 naira as a result of devaluation. Previously, when he is importing at one, at one dollar, at 100 naira, he will sell at 120. But now the dollar is moving to 200 naira. So he will still use one dollar. So he has to get 200 naira to get one dollar in order to import fuel. By the time he's bringing it here, assuming no other cost, He's bringing it at 200 Naira. Do you expect him to sell at less than 200 Naira? Yeah. Naturally, the price has to go up. So, but if we say that he must sell at 100 Naira, it means the government must subsidize. So, also, if the price, if the current the exchange rate is going to 300 Naira, so also the PMS must go beyond 300 or the government must subsidize. So, Naturally, these are the right. So, an order uh, is of doing business apart from cost of production, you know, that needs to be checked. Uh, you know, ensure that we produce what, what we need, particularly in PMS and others. Electricity tariff we also need to be realistic, uh, in as much as we want it to be cheap. Also, we need to be realistic. Those that are also producing or generating the electricity need to make some margin. So, we need to be realistic and balance uh, the equation. Ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. Still, again, corruption is a part of it. Uh, as again, you cannot run away from it. If you have a trailer, trailer lot of onions from Maiduguri to Lagos, for instance, if the cost of transportation is 150,000 naira, so the what the driver is going to spend on the road is not going to be less than 50,000 naira. 
That is additional cost as a result of the checkpoints that he's going to settle his way before he gets to Lagos. Without the checkpoint again, say you are burning, you are going to bring insecurity again. The cost again of insecurity mm -hmm. is going to be much more than that. And therefore, it is better with the checkpoint. And that is included. But if we are able to check that, you know, things will be easy. If you want to, again, get money, sorry to say, but mm -hmm. this is a reality. Whatever that you want to get, whatever the policy is going to, you, you really have to buy your way out. That is the stark reality, some of these things. So if this thing is checked, whatever that we are going to do, we are going to say, if we don't fight the corruption seriously, we get realistic, we understand the data. We are discussing out of this studio on practical ways to uh, really right. uh, fight corruption. But that is not the subject of discussion oh, now. Oh, 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 all right. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, actually, you have laid emphasis on, on corruption. And uh, it's actually, uh, you know, biting hard and making contributions to uh, the inflationary pressure that we have in the country. Now, let's return to uh, Professor Ken, if, uh, whom I understand uh, might be leaving us in a moment from now. Uh, but I'd like you to speak to some key issues before you leave. Um, experts have suggested uh, periodic reconstitution of uh, a country's inflation basket uh, to capture the rapidly changing consumption patterns. And uh, some experts also believe that uh, wage control can help in uh, cushioning the effect of uh, uh, inflation in the country. If that is true, is it a practical possibility in our circumstance? I have no objection. I have nothing against uh, expanding the basket. Um, but I think we probably will be avoiding the real task that we have to confront, uh, that, that we have to confront, yeah. and which is uh, dealt extensively with the agriculture. So at least we now know what agriculture uh, can do and what we can do to temper that. But we haven't dealt in greater detail what has to happen to power and then what has to happen to fuel costs that is pushing the transportation costs. And if you remember in 2016 17, when the central bank had so much problem with uh, macro prudential measures and the uh, capital account control measures and if, you know drop trade drops consecutive drops on on exchange on the um, exchange rate and all of that they turned to demand management by by blacklisting 34 items and that quickly brought us back to normal because when you deal with that then it means that it had to push resources to deal with backward integration in, um, fallout from restricting those 34 items and that's where you saw a lot of resources coming into the into the real sector and agriculture in particular because of the impact of the the backward integration agenda to deal with the uh, exclusion of those 34 items i think that list has to increase now that has to increase because that is why i kept pushing my finger pointing my finger to petroleum subsidy and petroleum uh, product importation you know, I keep pushing that. Look at 112 billion last month couldn't be given to governors to increase at least their, their receipt by about 30 billion each because it's, it's gone on subsidy. Uh, and, and we're going to have to tackle this because what, what is, is hemorrhaging the forex that we get? Uh, and, and, and we're going to do something. You can't have some five licenses out there and then you don't have another Dangote and the other guys to come in to support them. So that money could have set up three refineries, three modular refineries, money one month. That means on the average, 100 billion a month goes on subsidy. That means 100 billion extra money that the states would have needed to put into agriculture, to put into all other areas. That's 1.2 trillion. We can't go on like this. We just cannot go on like this. So look at both the demand and supply side, and then all that other structural areas that we have to do something about, and we can do something about this, without a doubt. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Professor Ken Ife. We thank you so much for being part of this program this morning. We learned that you have some other engagements somewhere, so we really have to thank you very much. We we'll hope to see you next again when something like this comes up. It's our pleasure. Thank you. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria. We will now take another break, and uh, when we come back, we continue our discussion on managing inflation in Nigeria. Please stay back. The much anticipated UEFA Euro 2021 is finally here. 
can Portugal defend the title they won four years ago as they face world champions France, Europe giants Germany, Spain, Italy and England? Catch all the action via live transmission, in-depth studio analysis, fixtures, results, updates and lots more on NTA, Africa's largest TV network. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Bola on 080-37044-286 or Idris on 080-34633-644. This broadcast is proudly brought to you by NTA in partnership with Media Business Solutions, MBS Sports. the dawn of a new era on NTA's flagship program, The Sports Parliament, revitalized with lots of varieties, including feedback responses from viewers. Sports Parliament, the weekly sports show that exposes all the intrigues in the Nigerian sports sector and projects an agenda on the way forward for Nigerian sports. On NTA, every Thursday at 10.30 p.m., running for one whole hour, discussing sports. The parliamentarians are more committed than ever to enlighten the viewers as the sports parliament takes it to a whole new level on the floor of the house. Keep a date with the sports parliament as motions are moved every Thursday on the floor of the house. Mr. Speaker, which is gavel to harmonize sports resolutions. The house have it. Yo, welcome back. You're still watching Good Morning Nigeria. And of course, we have been uh, deliberating on issues concerning managing inflation in Nigeria. Of course, we have our uh, professionals uh, who have been here as our uh, guests. Uh, Ni Akinsiju is still here. Of course, the Professor Ahmed Bawabelo uh, is uh, with us. Uh, Ni, um, should there be more aggressive approach to some of the measures that you have uh, uh, pointed out in the course of this conversation that could be put in place to ensure that uh, we, of course, reduce the inflation to one digit. Because as it is now, we're talking about 17.193%, of course, the least that we have. Right. So uh, what are those measures or inputs that uh, one could lay hands on um, with respect to ensuring that, of course, before the last quarter of this year, that would have reduced uh, the inflation level to a minimum level? Uh, Reduce the inflation to a minimum level. Well, I'm not too sure if we can uh, achieve one digit by the end of this year, but we have worked this part before. It's, it's not the first time. Um, one, as I prof noted, uh, this actually is also uh, one of the fallouts of uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. And when you get and you go into a recession, uh, all the deployment, policy deployments that you have to uh, you have to undertake would naturally lead you, you know, to uh, what we are experiencing now in terms of the deployment and, of course, the impact on, on, on the uh, jurisdiction itself. Um, we, we went into something exactly, near exactly like this, between 2016 and 2017. Yeah, exactly. In terms of figures, numbers, and all that, headline inflation was 18.9% in 20, uh, 2017 January. Uh, uh, food inflation was 22, 23, 23%. Well, we have 22.39 now. So mm -hmm. it's, it's actually, actually the same scenario as it were. And the turn in two is virtually the same thing. We, we are now seeing a turn. You know, we, we, the hope now is that this turn, is it just a one-off thing or is it a trend? If it's a trend, we'll start seeing a continuous decline. Just as we saw in 2017, when it turned uh, from February 2017, and by March 2019, that's a high of 18.9, uh, 18 I think 18.7. 
was actually 11.3 March 2019. Headline inflation had fallen to 11.3. So we're looking at, of course, a continuous decline, which would have taken the figures into the single-digit region. Where again, uh, by May, May, uh, April, May and June of that year, issues of insecurity started creeping in. By then, we were engaging that. Uh, you had uh, COVID-19 challenges coming in. So what I'm trying to say is, is that we have, we have worked that part before. <clears throat> it's not a desperate situation because if we're able to manage, you know, from that high of 22, I mean 23% food, 18.7 uh, 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 headline to uh, a low of uh, food, in fact, also fell, fell to 13.45 in March 2019, from that high of 23%. So I, I think we can work it appropriately. Uh, the only challenge we have now would be how to increase forex funding so that uh, uh, access to forex is enabled at a cheaper, at a relatively cheaper rate. I don't converse for cheap forex. You know, uh, your, your foreign exchange cost must be in tandem to your sourcing of, uh, of foreign exchange and of course with due consideration for local production you don't want your foreign exchange to be so cheap you know that rather than encourage local production and consumption people would prefer imported uh, uh, goods as it were and services so i i am i am looking at enough relatively cheap for forex that will enable uh, uh, increased acquisition of raw materials but again Going forward, we talk of importing raw materials. And in the last, in the last two years thereabout, there have been an upsurge in the volume of raw materials imported compared to what it was in between 2016 and 2017 when inflation was controlled. You know? Now, uh, the, the, the quantum of importation of raw materials by manufacturers is becoming higher, so which negates the policy of backward integration. Because in the medium to long term, what we need mostly is for self-sufficiency in our own raw material production and create a connection, for instance, between our farm, between agriculture and manufacturing. Most my agricultural products are actually raw materials for manufacturing uh, entities. You know? So there is a need to create that strong linkage you know, between manufacturing and agriculture. And of course, uh, the, I think the current government is doing much in terms of diversifying our infrastructural mix. Uh, now we are seeing uh, rail linking up with uh, ports, you know, and uh, of course, uh, critical uh, roads, uh, road infrastructure. So uh, perhaps in the next one or two years, we'll be talking of, of a proper transmodal uh, transportation, uh, transportation system. Now, when you have logistic falling, you know, it would, it would impact cost of production because, of course, that inputs the logistic input into cost of, of, of production will also have fallen too. You know, so generally what I'm trying to say essentially is I am not hopeless because we have worked this same government and worked this part before. But what, what is essential is the subnationals. It's, 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 it's not, yes, the revenue uh, sharing formula that we have now favors the federal. Yeah, 52%. But 48% still goes to other tiers of governments. If, even if there's no change yet, and I, I hope there will be change, but if there's no change in that formula, that 48% aspect of our national life you know, should be seen to be contributing something substantive to the basket. And that is why we get to know that we are living a federal system. Oh, well, okay, thank you, Nia um, Kinsiju. Professor Bauer, let's look at the Finance Act 2020. Do you see this, you know, this very act as playing some role in trying to dose the tension in the financial market and bring down or manage properly for the common man on the streets to understand that at least inflation can come down to a certain level he can appreciate? Uh, uh, for, for sure. You know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, the policies of the government uh, has been very, very good, even before the uh, Financial Act uh, 2021. You know, 
the government has really, really tried to have maintained the system the way it is now. But um, many may not appreciate that uh, because we easily discard the impact of COVID-19 and also the impact of the insecurity. If not for the commitment of the players, that's the economic team, in trying to see that these policies are brought in order to stabilize the system, situation would have been much worse. So, but with this now, we expect to see growth in the revenue generation, the IGR. Mm -hmm. Also, we expect to see some stability in the exchange rate. I don't want to be uh, too optimistic that um, it will stay for a long time and at uh, the official rate as it is, uh, 402, 411, depending on where it is being obtained. So, but uh, the interest rate for sure is going to stabilize. And by the time we get to September, October, we will see a drastic drop in the inflation rate. And we'll also see drastic improvement in the availability, particularly areas that borders the common man most. Mm -hmm. uh, the rich ones, so the, those that are more average, uh, at whatever price they can, they can afford, but the common man, particularly the full stock, because that is when the harvesting period uh, uh, will come. And that is when the manifestation of whatever policies that has been put in place uh, will, also be, will also be realized. So for sure, we are going to see that uh, that improvement is going to uh, bring ease, not only to the common man, even to the financial uh, sector as a whole and people that are, are doing uh, business for sure. Don't you see insecurity as being, you know, that will maybe that it may mitigate or rather hamper the attainment of this? I, I am sure with uh, the event that is unfolding now, I am sure we are going to get improvement in the system, particularly uh, in the security system. You see, uh, it requires commitment. Let me see. Uh, a governor, and to be specific, the governor of Adama State, Governor Omar uh, Fintri, mm. you know, he just focused his attention on security a little. And we have seen significant drop in the current rate. Mm. So, and by the action of the president, some utterances, although it's controversial, some, you know, I, it has gingered uh, the system. And also, I like uh, the way the Inspector General of Police acted, you know, because the aftermath of uh, the answers, I was worried that the panel has been set up to investigate certain matters, like holding the arms of the security forces. By the time you are setting panel to investigate this, this, uh, this person has done that, it means that you are constraining the security forces. Everybody, the person that is going to give command will not be willing to give command to open fire when there's problem because already this is what is happening. But now that they have the authority, they are asked to take action. I believe we will see a significant change. What is it? It's just, in other words, as I told you, it's just the security council meeting they had and they have the attention of the governor. He provided, he did what he could and we have seen significant drop had, it has been a long time I, in my university. Mm. I think about three, four, five professors were kidnapped. Yeah. But I, there was this. There is what we call Sheila boys. Mm -hmm. You cannot enter Kekena Pep. They were everywhere. So, but because of the action they have took now, mm -hmm. everybody is now moving freely in in, in Adabao State. If not for such kind of action, I wouldn't know. We would have been like uh, Kasina and Zamfara with the kind of bandit, with the way the security uh, problem started. So the same thing now with the kind of action that we have seen that has been taken at our. So we are going to have control. So if that, that has happened, 
you know, we are still in the planting season, particularly in the northern part of the country. It means people will still go by, will still farm this year. I was still going to see the reward, uh, or the result of uh, the farming. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much. I just hope that uh, whatever action being taken in Alemawa could be extended to other states, you know, so they can borrow a leaf from what is happening with respect to insecurity that you're talking that about. Is, uh, that is exactly what uh, Ni is saying. There is need to be, uh, there is need for synchronization of policies. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever it is that federal government is doing, if the subnational governments are not replicating, you will not get the result. Whatever economic policy that is being taken at the national, if it's not replicated at the subnational level, you will not feel the impact. Exactly. The, the federal government is very far. Just like uh, the president said, look, if you have, because you have failed to perform your responsibility, you are running to me <laughs> to ask me that the security here and there. You are supposed to control what is there. You have, you have your security vote. What are you doing with your security vote? Uh, uh, you are right, supposed uh, to support the state government. Instead of asking for state police, yes, this is constitutional matter, but before the state police, Amotekun, it's, it's a good development. Since it has been made uh, by, by law, that is what is expected to be. So the state government should provide adequate funding and ensure that they are checked. We should have that in every state. You don't need to even come as a four or five state. Well, you come four or five states, you can come in, you do whatever you do. But these are the things that are expected to be done. And we expect the governors, they have governors forum. You need to ask your colleagues, what are you doing about security? You, Tara Adamao state government, we have seen there was a sharp increase in crime rate. But over the sudden, we have seen a drop. What have you done? Uh, I expect right, uh, that the governor of Zamfara State Professor should relate Robin. with the governor of Adamawa State <laughs> to find solutions to some of the Thank you. Some of thank of you. Some of thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ni, as we are about to round off uh, this edition of the program, um, what would you suggest to the CBN and, of course, the, the government to do at this very critical period that uh, we have uh, rising inflation uh, so that uh, by the end of uh, this year we'll have a good story to tell with respect to inflation in Nigeria? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, intensive at the level of the of the federal government's intensification of what it has been doing. Uh, let's see uh, more more of uh, more of uh, those infrastructure coming up because they have implication for his and cost of doing business, I and mean, we need to put that into context. Uh, I I am also impressed by the uh, the latest supplementary budget you know, taken to the National Assembly by the federal government, uh, about 770 billion naira thereabouts uh, has been budgeted for uh, acquisition of military hardware. You know, it shows government is serious, you know, because uh, if you also have, uh, now there's a need for uh, a new uh, technological mix, you know, in, in the area of uh, military hardware need for more drones and all that because of the nature of uh, of insecurity that we have now it's the insecurity is a major challenge so the fact that government are taking that of that uh, kind of uh, budget to the national assembly shows that the government is, is is committed knows what is doing i think in a long while we've never had this this uh, this kind of uh, budgetary uh, allocation, you know, for just for military, uh, acquisition of military hardware. So I, I, I think that should be done. Uh, the, the CBN had continually, you know, explained its limitation using monetary policy instruments at this time. Um, we, we, what, what is important now is to continue, at least in the next two, three months, to continue to drive the, the healthiness, the well-being of the structure, you know, the productivity base, the productivity the productivity channel, consideration for uh, for power, increase in power. Uh, thankfully, there is this strong vision on okay. gas expansion. I mean, years, year, of, year of gas now that we, we are utilizing gas and all that. So all these things, when they are brought together, of course, it's not going to be one event. It's supposed to be a continuous chain of events, and okay. we expect that at the end of the day, uh, things would be more. It will be less depressing as it were. Okay. <laughs> well, many thanks, Senia uh, Kinsiju, Investment and Financial Analyst. It's a pleasure being with us this morning. My pleasure as always. Thank you for uh, Professor Ahmed Bawabello, 
uh, Professor of Accounting at Badama University. We thank you so much for being part of this program thank this morning. You. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And of course, a very big thank you to you out there for being part of it. You've been, you know, a good asset to us. We thank you so much. We hope you join us tomorrow on Good Morning Nigeria. I am Yusuf Narabu Suman saying stay safe. And I am Kiri Anumaya. We are live again tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Be a part of it. Thank you for watching.